It's the Orioles on Masson, and the O's continue at home as the A's come in for a three-game weekend series. The Orioles have won four in a row for the first time this year, and we'll try and extend it here in downtown Baltimore tonight. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, and welcome. The O's playing some really good baseball, and in fact, both of the teams coming in here tonight are getting it done with pitching. The A's haven't hit a lick of late. The Orioles a little bit better. We'll see what happens in this three-game set. The pitching, absolutely magnificent. Coming off a series that they won against Toronto in which they gave up only one earned run. We thought it would be fun to go back and take a look at some names and a time. The last time in this ballpark, the Orioles won a three-game series and surrendered only one earned run or fewer, you got to go all the way back to 95 against the Tigers. The starters in that series for the Orioles, Kevin Brown, Ben McDonald, and Mike Messina. Bring us up to date. Tommy Hunter, Jason Hamill, and Brian Mattis were the starters. Only one earned run that came against Tommy Hunter. That's how good they pitched in that series. And now tonight, Mike Mordick, it's going to be Jake Arietta trying to continue the trend. Yeah, well, that was a pretty fun stat right there. You can't believe how long it's been since there's been that kind of success. And starting pitching has been the key. Well, tonight, Jake Arietta, who's off to a really good start, got roughed up a little bit in his last start in Anaheim in the fifth inning, but he only allowed one batter through four innings to get on base. Almost a near perfect yeah. game. He looked so good. And then that fifth inning, the wheels kind of fell off. He tried to pick a guy off at first, threw it away, just couldn't keep his composure out there and did not make it out of the fifth inning. Well, if there's an advantage for these two teams who are on hitting, it may be that the Orioles have been a little bit more advantageous. Well, there's no doubt about it. They've been relying on the home run ball, and especially late in the game the seventh inning they've hit 12 home runs and they're leading the league in that regard here you go Baltimore Orioles 50 percent of the runs are by way of the home run to lead the league very impressive so you know to have that in your back pocket obviously you're, you're in every game you know and the starting pitching is going deep bullpen's been great even if they're behind there's that always that hope and promise that a, that a long ball can get you right back into the game one of the interesting parts of this game will be how the managers approach this because they both come in knowing that neither team scoring many runs so did you start right from the beginning thinking small ball and trying to pick up a run at a time well I think that's the A's uh, game plan anyway they're leading the league in stolen base Bases. So if they can get guys on base, they're probably going to be aggressive, even off the great catcher, Matt Weider. So, and, and us as well. I, I don't think we're going to try to rely on hitting the home run. We need to just get our bats going and be consistent and improve that runners in scoring position average. This is a great opportunity to see a future star. Cespedes is going to be in center field for Oakland tonight. He is a 5-2 player coming out of Cuba. First game that he'll play here at Camden Yards. It's the A's and the O's when we come back.
Baseball on Madison is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by Jeep. Jeep and the unique brand of freedom you'll find only in the full line of Jeep vehicles. Visit jeep.com to learn more. Clear skies tonight. A little breeze will be blowing, and it's going to be cool here in Baltimore tonight. Take a look at our train game time temperature. 60 degrees to start the ball game. Lots of blue sky, and uh, the wind, at least to start, will be blowing out towards left field. Visit train.com for an independent train comfort specialist dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. The A's in town. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Brought to you by Dodge. Weeks, Crisp, and Reddick. Cespedes, Kaiaua, Smith, Suzuki, Sogard, and Pennington. With Jamal Weeks making an appearance here this season, it's been about stealing some bases. See your authorized Dodge dealer and experience a world of performance, design, and fuel efficiency. Schedule a test drive or go to Dodge.com and check out their powerful light. Well, here's the AFCA intelligence report on Jake Arrieta tonight. He's looking to bounce back after that rough fifth inning in Anaheim. In, in his last start, he needs to keep throwing strikes. He has been pounding the zone, and he's had great stuff. And he needs to stay composed tonight. If there is a problem out there, and sometimes there are, an error or a bad call, just pull yourself together, Jake, and stay with his game plan. Arietto making a start against the ball club in which he has gone 0 and 1 against the A's. He's had only one start last uh, July 2010. And he was here in Camden Yards. He took the loss in that game, giving up the four runs on seven hit, four walks in the six innings worked against the A's. As we said, uh, both of these teams have had their struggles offensively. The A's are going to come into this ball game in uh, the bottom third for Bob Melvin's team of just about every offensive category. The A's are last in average. They are last in runs. They are last in on base percentage. They've won it through their pitching. Their starting uh, pitching coming in is second in ERA. Their overall pitching second in earned run average. So they've got to hold the runs down if they're going to win some ball games for Buck Showalter's team. Their pitching, as we said, has been spectacular, and their home runs have been opportune. And that's been the difference. This team will run if given a chance. His weeks who shows bunt right away. That's what we were talking about. I asked Mike about playing the small ball. Got to get on base, try and run, create some offense. Well, they're well aware of Jake Arietta's stuff, and they're going to try to do whatever they can to try to get on base. Weeks will take the pitch, and that's going to be down low. Jeff Kellogg, the home plate umpire, and the count will go to 2-0. and oh. You know, especially if your offense is struggling. You know, you got to take some chances. Obviously showing Bun early. Jake's falling behind quickly. Taken all the way, and that will be in there for a strike. Oakland team has won their last two games. They had a day off and got into uh, Baltimore last night. Here's the 2-1 delivery, and Weeks will foul that one back, so Arietta comes back on him and gets the count to two balls and two strikes. For Jake so far, the lefties are hitting 240 off him. Right handers only 195. He has a very solid combined 220 batting average by opponents against him. 2 2 delivery. Weeks will take it down low, and the count will go to 3 and 2. Jake says has retired 65% uh, of leadoff batters on the season. Has issued only a couple of leadoff walks. To hitters who are opening up an inning and does not want to do that here to weeks. Here's the 3 2 delivery on the way, and that'll be foul back again. Well, I'm sure another thing that the Oakland A's are aware of is in Jake Arietta's outing, his last outing, he had two pickoff attempts at first base and threw them both away. So, you know, they're going to do some things if they do get on base to try to disrupt him a little bit. Three ball, two strike count. They have stolen 18 bases this year. Weeks puts that one in the air to center. Jones has it lined up. And he's got it. And Weeks is retired. Well, here's the defense tonight for the Baltimore Orioles. Nolan Reimhold back out in left field. Adam Jones in center. Nick Marcakis in right. Ryan Flaherty gets to start at third base tonight after collecting his first major league hit last night. J.J. Hardy at short. Robert Andino back at second base. Congratulations, Robert. Chris Davis at first, and Matt Weeder's doing the catching. 
That'll bring up Coco Chris. Some uh, question whether or not Coco Chris was even going to be on the roster or on the DL for this game as he has missed seven of the last eight ball games with an inner ear infection and has gone just three for 27 over the last eight games. They were thinking maybe he was going to have to go on the DL but decided last night after they got here he seemed to be all right wanted to play so he was in the lineup. It's it's pretty amazing right now what's going around the league. I mean guys are you know they're catching the flu the food poisoning ear infections the the Orioles have been just devastated with some illness about half the team has got some physical ailment going happy to say Jim Johnson is not only out of the hospital but back Jason Birkin was sent down today Johnson rejoins the team Robert and and Dino rejoins the team after being away two games for the birth of uh, their second child there's Andino making the start at second base so the Orioles had to make a roster change today and Birkin who came up did not appear in any game here with the Orioles and has gone back down 2 2 delivery to Chris that's on the inside corner and that's that. Oh, a nice pitch right there by Jake Arietta. Throws that fastball in, tails back over the plate. And Coco Crisp is a pair of shoes in the batter's box. Here's Josh Reddick. Reddick, of all the Oakland players, has faced Arietta the most times, and that's not many. He's two for five against him. The uh, Orioles, of course, familiar with Reddick in his days with the Red Sox. And the Orioles hope he does not continue to do against the Orioles what he did when he was playing for Boston. He just tore it up last year. He hit 364 against the Orioles and uh, a career 350 average. And in this ballpark, he's 13 for 30, hitting 433 at Camden Yards with three home runs. Some great numbers there, and um, I mean that's the reason why the A's got him. Obviously, for some offensive help, because they've struggled lately, and and he's kind of gotten off to a slow start as well. But he's capable of doing some good damage up there at the plate. One two delivery, and that will be taken down low. A lot of uh, lefties in this lineup against Arietta in terms of the numbers, 240 as opposed to 195. Both home runs Arietta surrendered have been two. Left handers. You got Weeks, Chris, switch hitters, and Reddick, a lefty. That ball will go to short. It will move perfectly. Hardy right there. Hit right on him. And that's going to be there in time. And Arietta will retire the side in order. So the Orioles will take a look at the lineup for the O's when we come back. That is the only way to come to the ballpark right there. It's the cheapest ride in downtown Baltimore. 
except for the medical expenses when your shoulder falls off. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Orioles brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Rymold, Hardy, Marquegas, Jones, Wieterson, Davis, Reynolds, Flaherty, and Andino. For Adam this season, six home runs, 10 RBIs, 360. Well, the FCA Intelligent Report tonight on Brandon McCarthy is he's a strike thrower. He's going to come out. Yeah, he's not not scared to throw it over the plate. Gets a lot of ground balls, but the key for him has been lack of run support. So he's hoping that the A's offense helps pick him up tonight. Remember, visit AFSIA.org, the association for IT pros. He went 9-9 nine and nine last year with a 3.32 ERA, had 25 starts. And we'll start Nolan Reimold out with a strike. Rimo back in the lineup last night continued his hit streak to 11 games with a one for five. Brandon McCarthy with the 0 1 delivery. And that's going to be in the right center field for a base hit. Will it split the D? Reddick going over, sliding, slipped. We'll get it back in, but it's a stand up double and a 12 game hit streak for Rimo. Well, nice swing right there by Nolan Rimo taking what he's given. Pitch middle away and just drives it to right center. Boy, that's a great sign. That he is in a good place at the plate and healthy as well. It's great to see him in the lineup after playing last night. I asked him how the how it felt after the game because that's what they were concerned with. That neck had been acting up after he played, and he said he was fine. Said there were no lingering effects of it. So hopefully that at bat will prove that. So the Orioles get a runner into scoring position right away. Rymold's got a new career high in hit streaks of 12 previous had been 10 and now with a runner at second base Hardy showed bunt and let's see if that's what Buck Showalter wants they'll move in Pennington the shortstop will move right in behind Rymold Sogard making the start at third base is already in on the cut of the grass and they deliver to Hardy, not showing Bunt that time, and the slider will miss away. Or the cut fastball, 101. Well, here early in the game, you know, it might be a nice trick to show Bunt, but hey, you get a guy out there in scoring position. J.J. Hardy's been, you know, he's kind of picked it up. He's had a couple doubles over the Toronto series, but uh, it's a good opportunity for him to, to get things going with a base hit and possibly drive Nolan Reimold in. Only two for 15 with runners in scoring position for Hardy and a breaking ball. That had some bend on it. And it catches the inside corner. Both of these teams really struggling. Oakland dead last at 182. The Orioles next to them at 213 with runners in scoring position. The two lowest numbers in the American League. Yet the Orioles are 12 and 7 and Oakland's 10 and 10. Here's the 1 2 delivery and he reached for it and fouls it back. Good job of fighting off that pitch. Tough, tough pitch down and away. Stay alive. Carthy is one of those who doesn't waste a lot of time on the mound. Gets the ball back and he comes with it. 6 7, 200 pounder out of Dallas, Texas. 1 2 delivery. Reach four in the air, left field. Chris back near the warning track. Rymel tags. He's going to come. Chris has no arm. And that's why you read the scouting reports. Yeah. Go go Chris can barely throw to the cutoff man and Rymold immediately went back tagged up and gets the base. Great play by Nolan. Oh and here's the athletics defense tonight. You just saw Coco Crisp out there and left. Suspedus in center field. Reddick in right field. Sogard getting the start at third base tonight. Pennington at short. Weeks playing second. Kahui playing first and Suzuki doing the catching. Uh, here's a real chance the RBI Wayne Kirby over there who goes through these reports infield outfield take a look at the arms to Marlo Hale at third base it's vital for the third base coach to know what those arms are because you have to make decisions and uh, that time no question Reimold would move up now Marquecas has a chance in any number of ways to get him in. And the pitch will be inside from McCarthy for a ball. For Nick so far, three for 14 with runners in scoring position. These numbers also low compared to how they ended up last year. Nick hit 268 in these situations last season. Here's the 1 0 delivery. Mark Kekas will take that one inside, and the count goes to 2 0. 
Well, Nick's feeling a lot better about himself uh, as well. He had a great night last night. Orioles outfield has been outstanding. Sixth in the league in batting average, tied for second in home runs, fourth in slugging, and tied for second in runs scored. And that one's going to go to left field. Coco Chris going to be very shallow. Rymel's going to come anyway. There's that arm, and the throw's not in time. So twice the Orioles have taken the advantage of Coco Chris not being able to throw. RBI Marquegas at a 1 0 lead. Great speed by Nolan Reimhold as well. Nick Marquecas gets a pitch he can get up in the air. Possibly a different outfielder. The Orioles aren't going to take this chance, but you've seen two plays already in the early going. That Coco Crisp doesn't have much of an arm out there, and they expose it a couple times in that sequence. That ball was caught in a place where I'm not sure you could find another outfielder you would try and score on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was really a very shallow fly ball for a sack fly, but there was no hesitation. And Marquegas will pick up the RBI, and the Orioles get the lead. Nine batted in now for the Orioles' right fielder. Here's Adam Jones, five game hit streak coming into this one. He is eighth in the American League in hits, tied for third in home runs. And will foul that one away. And Adams been touching him up. During that five game hit streak, it's not just a streak, it's big numbers. And uh, continues to get the home runs when they matter most. When the Orioles need a tie or a lead, he did it again last night, game winning RBI in the eighth inning. Ground ball towards short, Pennington. In the dirt. They had a nice pick play, and there goes Adam Jones, and it looks like he's all right. Kaiahua had a reach to get it, and now this, you hope. You hope. Those collisions at first base, first baseman. Oof. He caught him right in the thigh with a. Orioles have a 1 0 lead. Presented by Luna. Call for the Luna Double and get your second room of flooring free. 877-241-LUNA. Fine hand, uh, fine crowd on hand rather for the ball game tonight here on this Friday. As the Orioles look to make it uh, five in a row. Arietta's first inning. Cespedes will lead it off. He is playing in center field. Those who are following Oakland, uh, broadcasters, writers, and players cannot say enough about this 26 year old Cuban who went to the Dominican Republic, became a free agent, and has been signed to a four year deal and has just started out like a house of fire. He's a power hitter, he has tremendous speed, a cannon for an arm. Jonas Cespedes, who led Cuba on their national team for over eight seasons. He set a record in the Cuban League for home runs. 
during the 10 11 season. And the highest percentage of teams RBI's total he's got it 32 percent of the RBI's for Oakland belong to him. Chopper down to third base played on the big hop Flaherty over and we're getting and we saw Flaherty knew the speed of the runner going to first. He sure did. Hustle that one over. Cespedes retired. Kaiou will come to the plate. He's playing at first base in the ball game tonight. He has started 10 games now, seven of those at first, and three as the designated hitter. Put up some decent numbers in the at bats. That he has had so far. A couple of doubles for the extra base hits. Kao will take the pitch away. 1 0. This is a lineup that, for the most part, if you're Arietta on the mound, you don't have to fool around with a lot. If you're looking at it, you're probably going to say Reddick. And Cespedes in that three and four spot are the two guys you've got to be most careful of. Well, there's no doubt about it. Obviously, the power numbers there for Cespedes you have to be careful about. But, you know, this whole lineup seems like it can be pitched to right now in the early going of the season. 2-0 yeah. delivery, and that'll miss up high. And the count will go to 3-0. and oh. Coming into the ballgame, Arietta in his previous four starts, seven walks and 21 strikeouts. Is given up just under a hit per inning. Here's the 3 0 delivery taken all the way, and he walked him on four straight. And that is the first walk surrendered in the ball game. Comes with one down. The Maryland Lottery strike and rich contestant of the game, Santiago Funes Jr. from Olney. Santiago, already, uh, you've got 500 bucks just for being selected. And for every Oriole strikeout, $100 will be added by the Maryland Lottery. See how you can turn non winning strike and rich scratch offs into cash and enter to win great O's prizes at mdlottery.com slash strike it which today. Good luck. Here is Seth Smith. He's the designated hitter, and he will take the high strike. It's funny how the strike zone changes uh, with each umpire. I mean, last night there were low strikes being called. Tonight in the early going, the high strikes being called. Sometimes they call off the plate. Just have to make the adjustments as a hitter and a pitcher. And Smith will take that one, and that too is going to be in there for a strike. So after four out of the zone in a row for the walk, Marietta comes back and gets ahead on the count here. 0 and 2. Seth Smith's 29 year old outfielder who last season played in Colorado, hit 284, 15 home runs, 59 RBIs for the Rockies. The 0 2 delivery, and that's going to be up high. He was acquired. For a couple of pitchers, Guillermo Moscoso for one involved in the deal with the Rockies that brings Seth Smith from Colorado to Oakland. Kaiowe with the lead at first and not a big one. Smith the DH, 1 2 delivery to him off speed and just missed with it. Try to get the outside corner. Not a bad breaking ball right there. Just tries to. Hit that outside corner, leaves it up there, change the eye level a little bit. Might try to run that fastball in like he has shown early in the game here. Two balls, two strikes. Runner not going, and it will be foul back. Here's Brian Mattis from the Orioles hope. Is back on track after an outstanding performance in the ball game last night. He didn't get the win, but he looked like the Brian Mattis of a couple of years ago with only two runs, both unearned, four hits over six innings. The Orioles started. And that is right there. Really good pitch right there. He wanted to hit this spot in the previous pitch, and he left it. Kind of middle in, well, not middle in, but up and in. And this time he hit Matt Weeder's glove perfectly. Great location right there to lock up Smith. 
Kurt Suzuki with a runner at first and two down. Kazuki Suzuki, the catcher, of course, for this ball club for a number of years now, off to a tough start. It's that 227 average, and he'll take the pitch up high for a ball. He started out hitting just 182 in the first 11 ball games, and that really pulled his average down. He's picked it up with seven hits in his last 22 at bats. Suzuki will take it. Arietta gets it in, and the count goes to one and one on the Oakland catcher. The Orioles continue to be sustained by the magnificent starts the Orioles have had. Arietta will try and join that flow here in this game. And his Oriole pitchers, starters, have just given up nothing. And that pitch is going to be in there for a strike. Suzuki didn't like either of the last two when it goes to one and two. Take a look at the earned run average leaders in the American League. Texas on top, then Oakland with a magnificent 2-7-1. And the Orioles have the third best ERA at 3-1-2 in Chicago and Toronto. One ball, two strike count. Kaiue at first base, not going anywhere. That's going to be a problem in the corner. Rymo going over to get it. Kaiue heading to third base, and they're going to wave him home. Gallego's going to send him. Throw comes to the second man, and this ball game is tied. So Suzuki, a big two-out RBI double, makes it a 1-1 ball game. Suzuki had a good swing on a fastball, middle end, uh, right there, and drives it. Down the left field line, and Reimhold got to it quickly, but his throw to J.J. Hardy was a little bit offline, or they probably had a shot at the runner at home. Not very fleet of foot, but uh, throw just a little bit too offline right there. And the A's are going to show right there how aggressive they're going to try to be because they've had such a hard time scoring runs this year. Suzuki gets his eighth RBI. And as we said in this game, two teams coming in who can't score a lick. All three games will probably be 10-9. <laughs> right. <laughs> and a 1-0 count on Eric Sogard. Sogard's getting the start at third base. Throw down by Wheaters, a one hopper that will be blocked by Hardy. Sogard was not in the original lineup tonight as uh, Luke Hughes recently acquired. Claimed off waivers from Minnesota. Was scheduled to make the start at third base. But he too not feeling well. And came out for batting practice today and couldn't do it. So change had to be made. And here is Sogard. And he'll take the pitch. It will miss. Weeders wants to go out as the count goes to 3 and 0. And here's what you were talking about, Mike, where you get into a little jam here, trying to keep Arietta on a level plane. Well, exactly right. And it's great to see Matt Weeders going out there trying to keep him settled down. But. You know, Jake's got to take some responsibility about himself. Maybe just take a take a walk behind the mound, take a deep breath, you know, regroup himself, get his composure back, and, and uh, continue to pound the zone with that great stuff that he has. 3-0 count. Sogard will take. It is in there for a strike. Sogard has been up and down over the last three seasons with the A's. Over the last two years, a 221 average, only a couple of home runs. Four RBIs in 31 ball games, and he lifts that one to right field, back near the wall, and goodbye home run. Sogard delivers the long ball. That is going to be home run number two. RBIs five and six, and a three to one A's lead. Oh. Well, Sogard got himself into a hitter's count, and he was aggressive on a middle fastball. He lifted it out of the yard to right. How many times in baseball does the guy who's not supposed to play end up being a big player in the game? <laughs> Sogard gets it. 41 pitches have now been thrown by Jake Arrieta. We're not through the second inning. And uh, three runs on two hits as the one out walk has scored in this inning. 
Fouled off outside of first by Pennington. Pennington, their switch hitting shortstop so far, three for 21 right handed, 11 for 50 batting left handed. And a little help right there from Sogard. That'll be fouled away. And Pennington with a one ball, two strike count. Arietta's now given up three home runs on the season. One ball, two strike count, and Cliff Pennington. And the pitch will be inside. And he goes to two and two. Well, you wonder if he's just feeling a little tentative right now after the, I mean, that four pitch walk. Might have gone in his head a little bit. I mean, Jake's at his best when he when he's aggressive and he's confident. He just can't go out there and, and be tentative at all. Got to believe in his stuff and throw it because he has electric stuff. Like right there, that's a great pitch. Will cut her in. Just Unless he becomes fuel efficient soon, he's not going to be around very long in this game. 46 pitches. Three ball, two strike count. And that'll be fouled off outside of first base as Pennington battles away. Pennington, another one of these A's players, seemingly has uh, enjoyed playing against the Orioles a good deal. He's always been a very tough out for the Oriole pitchers. 3 2 delivery on the way, and he'll take that one back, fouls it off again. Pennington last year hit 344 against the Orioles, going 11 for 32. He's a career 342 hitter. That is his best career average against any American League team. And he's got a 317 average in this ballpark. Down to first base this time. Davis has got it. We'll take it to the bag, and that will retire the side. But three runs in on a couple of hits, including a two RBI homer and a 3 1 A's lead. Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Acura, Acura Advance, and by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Here at Camden Yards tonight, the Orioles fall behind by a couple early in the game. Weeders, Davis, and Reynolds coming up against Brandon McCarthy. The Orioles last year lost the series to the A's, five games to four. Orioles have not won a season series against the A's since 98. Orioles did all right against them here in this ballpark, 3 and 0, but went 1 and 5 in Oakland. Well, you know Brandon McCarthy's happy to get uh, the three runs on the board because in his five previous starts, it's Matt Waiters flies out to right field. His five previous starts. He's received three runs or fewer. Well, his uh, support on the year is 197. So he's in heaven. <laughs> right. 
1.97 runs per start for McCarthy. This is unheard of, and it's only the second inning. He may fall apart. Yeah, you're right. You Just never know. It's all over. Not used to it. Sure. <laughs> Here's Chris Davis. Home run in each of the last two. And Davis will take that one down low. See the two home runs in the last two games. Those are the two hits he's had in the homestand. Two for nine. And three RBIs. Including the two RBI homer last night. 1-0 delivery. And that's taken away for a ball. Left-handers have good numbers against McCarthy. 346. And they've hit two home runs. The right-handers 245. So you're talking about a 100-point spread. Left-handers, right-handers against the A starter. And that one will be missed away, and the count will go to 3-0. and oh. Well, he primarily throws a cutter. He doesn't really have a sinker, per se, to run away from lefties. His changeup might have a little fade, but cutters his primary pitch four seam fastball and then a curve ball 12 to 6 curve is what he uses the most he's gotten a lot of ground balls this year kind of surprising it with the pitches he uses I guess the cutters kind of his sinker I guess I, I guess so even though that last pitch looked like it had a little run to it that ball will be down the line in left field crisp going over and he'll have no play and a three ball two strike count on Davis See that breeze blowing from right to left field. It was a very breezy day here in Baltimore. But here in the ballpark tonight, not quite as bad as it is outside the yard. 3 2 delivery and came in with a heater and gunning. Hey, he did. Chris Davis battled this at bat. He stayed away from the hole at bat. Now it's just elevated up and over the plate. Chris Davis couldn't quite get to it. Two down here in the second inning. In the designated hitter role for the Orioles tonight in the interchangeable parts season that was predicted and is being carried through on by Buck Showalter. Here's Mark Reynolds DHing in this one. And he will take the pitch for a strike. Reynolds is two for three off McCarthy in the limited at bats he's had. Still looking for that first home run. And that will miss outside for a ball. Brandon McCarthy against the Orioles, one and one, ERA near five. Seven appearances, five starts prior to this one. A couple of games here at Camden Yards, one and oh, with a six ERA. And that's going to miss outside. Two ball, one strike count. McCarthy has 29 wins, 36 losses in his career. 28 years old. 2 1 delivery. Reynolds with a cut and not close to that had some movement on it. 2 and 2. Yeah, that's that uh, breaking ball that he throws. Almost 12 to 6 breaking ball. You don't really see those anymore. You see, see them all the time. Uh, but not many pitchers are able to get up on top of that. 2 2 fastball will miss away. And he gets up on top of a pitch. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a tall drink six, of water seven, out there. I'm telling you, that's pretty well up there. Yeah. Tall, lanky, little whip service on that pitch. Here's the three-two delivery and uh, gives up the walk. And that's the first walk the Orioles have picked up. Tomorrow, the Orioles Legends Celebration Series begins. Hall of Famer Frank Robinson will be immortalized with a larger-than-life bronze sculptor in the new center field picnic area. Five o'clock, you can be there to watch the unveiling. Some great stars, including Hank Aaron. Uh, Jim's going to be here. Jim Palmer will be in. Eddie Murray will be here. Cal, all on hand. Tomorrow, five o'clock, in the picnic area for the first unveiling as part of the Legends Series. That one in the air to center field by Ryan Flaherty. Cespedes will put it away. And no runs, no hits, no errors. And one left on base to complete here at Camden Yards. The A's lead it. Three to one.
played in the ball game. Uh, worth repeating quote comes from Buck Showalter after he had his last start. He's not a young pitcher anymore. All right. It's time to win those type games as he blew up in the fifth inning. We shouldn't have that type of problem we had. We need a shutdown inning there. Let's go. He had enough experience to get through that and he will. Well it's kind of the same thing happening here is Arietta's got to respond to the second inning which he threw 31 pitches. He's one of nine. One of ten first pitches for strikes. That's not good. Well, I mean, that Buck is a, exactly right. There's a lot of players on this team that have had experience now, and, it, and it's time to answer and, and be held accountable for what you do out there. You have to work to get better and fight through struggles, and, you know, it's a grind. I don't care if you're a pitcher or a position player. If you're struggling with the plate, you, you work hard, get your focus, do your work, and, uh, you know, Jake's in that boat too, and, and there's a good feel right now on this team, and he just wants to keep challenging players, and, and that's what that quote is all about. Yep. So let's see if Arietta can respond to it here. Two ball, one strike count. Weeks will bring Flaherty in a little bit, even with a bag at third, maybe a little more in the pitch. He flied out to center field his first time up, leadoff batter, and Weeks will take that one. That is a strike. And it will go to two and two. Arietta got the win in the opener against Minnesota. No runs, two hits over seven. Non decisioned against the Yankees and Toronto. And then that last outing, almost perfect through the first four innings against the Angels. And then the fifth inning, everything just came unglued as they batted around against him. And he gave up five runs on six hits and four and a third innings in that ball game. Three ball, two strike count on Weeks. Crisp and Reddick to follow. And the 3 2 will be fouled back. You got to figure the A's are have to be a little better offensively than what they came into the series with. They scored only 59 runs in their first 20 games, the fewest runs in Oakland history through the first 20 games of the season. And as we said, dead last in the league in runs. Weeks again fighting off pitches. That's something they've done well early on in the game. And that's fight off some stuff from Mariano. Well, they're certainly making him work. Uh, driving a lot of counts to three and two. He's had a couple walks already. Or one walk. But uh, they're, they're making Jake Arietta work right now in the early going. This is going to be the eighth pitch of the at bat. And the three two shatters the bat. Flaherty over will not have a play. That one came off right above his top hand. Mm. Yeah, Jake uh, runs that one in on him. That, that bat just explodes. That's a dangerous weapon flying out there. Home plate umpire giving weeks a minute here. Bone down the handle and a three ball, two strike count. It'll be the ninth pitch of this at bat. Weeks did the same thing his first time up. Kept fouling off pitches before he flied out to center in a three two count. And the three two delivery here. And this time he's going to get the walk, and that creates problems. So the game flow in this one has been about the A's finding a little offense early with Suzuki getting the RBI double. Sogard getting the home run his second of the year for two RBIs. And now a chance with a runner on our auto trader game flow. Well, you know, they're going to try to push the envelope here. Coco Crisp has, has a hole over there on the first base side. Weeks can run. They've had trouble scoring, so something's going to happen. They're going to they're going to stay aggressive here in the early part of this game. Flaherty moves in at third base. The pitch is taken. It is a strike to Chris, who struck out his first time up. For weeks, he has three stolen bases. He's three out of four in the stolen base department. Weeders has thrown out five out of fourteen, and against Jake Arrieta. Teams are two for two in stolen bases. The throw over and Weeks will get back to the bag. But this is the disruption 
that Oakland hopes to create every inning when they come up to get everybody thinking about what if. Well, there's no doubt about it. And they lead the, lead the American League in stolen bases. So the fact that they're not, you know, hitting the ball as well as they're probably capable of doing, they're just trying to be as aggressive as possible. Straight steal, leaders throw. It's a good one. He got him. And a good tag put on by Hardy, who had to corral that throw. And Waiters catches Weeks. Well, Weeks had a good jump. Off he goes, but Matt Waiters, gold glove catcher, makes a perfect throw, and J.J. Hardy stays in there and puts a good tag on him. Nice job all the way around. I think he might have been safe. <laughs> But a good play, and they get him. That's a big out. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something about that play. A key, obviously, to Matt Weider's success is when players in the middle of a diamond take a throw from him and they straddle the base. That's going to go into right field. Nick Marquez is going to have to chase this down all the way to the wall. Kogo Crisp is on his way to second, and Crisp will go in with his first. Double of the season. Oh, here it is. And you see perfectly that J.J. Hardy, Hardy is straddling the base, and it gives that perception to the umpire, you know, that his glove is obviously there. If J.J. Hardy's left foot is in front of the base and he has to swipe tag, I guarantee you the umpire will call him safe. J.J.'s in a great position. Everything's real tight and compact, and it goes the Orioles' way on that one. And a big out. Obviously, followed up by the Coco Crisp double. Hardy will hold the runner close. Here's Reddick. Reddick will take it inside. He grounded out his first time up. We've talked about that so much over the past few years, Mike, about players wanting to stand in front of the bag and do the Olay tag, that swipe tag, right? That kills you. Well, base stealers, they see that opportunity to get to the back part of the base. And yeah, it sure does. And what it is, is it's just giving the team another opportunity to score. That one popped up Flaherty over again. We'll have no play on it. I remember as a young player coming up with the Oakland A's one of the first my first experiences in the big league. I did that big leagues. I did that exact same thing. I took the throw in front of the base. Renee Lashman was the catching coach and he called me in after the game and he said a lot of bad words to me <laughs> and he told me I was costing his catcher and he, I was costing the team. That's by true. doing that, he yeah. said, if I see you do it again, I'm sending you back at, back to the minor leagues. And, I mean, that's how important that is. Yeah. I mean, that is giving the opposing team an opportunity to score a run, and that's an out given to you if you if you do it the right way. Yet we continue to see so many shortstop second basemen want to take that ball in front of the bag. Yeah, I, scared I of the understand. contact, I think. Yeah. You yeah. know, you got to get your nose in there. One ball, two strike count. Reddick with an RBI chance. A 3 1 A's lead. Arietta's pitch, and he knew it. Nice pitch right there. He was there. walking away before the call was made. Arietta gets his third strikeout. Yeah, that fastball end's been pretty good for Jake tonight. It runs back over, freezes these hitters. Good pitch by Jake. That'll bring Cespedes to the plate. We were talking about the league record he set in Cuba 33 home runs. His last season there, the 2010 11 year, he hit 333 last season in Cuba, has always had a batting average well into the 300s. And over the years, eight years that he played there, his career numbers 323, 145 home runs, 464 RBIs while playing for the national team in Cuba. Cespedes will take the breaking ball. It is on the inside corner for a strike. The RBIs, 18 of them, trailing Nick Swisher and Josh Hamilton for the American League RBI lead. He grounded out his first time up. Cespedes will foul that one back. Well, Cespedes obviously off to a great start. He's an RBI machine with, with great power and It'll be interesting to see how the league adjusts to him and what they try to do to get this this good young hitter out and what he has to do to make his adjustments because I think a lot of times, you know, players that come up and pitchers don't know them, 
you know, they may have early success because they have that talent, but there are so many scouting reports and <laughs> so many pitching reports on hitters. If you have a weakness, it will be exposed yes, early. Yeah. Cespedes with a two kite strike count on him. He's done well getting the runs in, obviously, going eight for 16 with runners in scoring position and two home runs. He's got Kogo Crisp at second base with two down. There's Arietta. Tries to work out of this already having had a little help from Weeders and Hardy on that caught stealing. 0 oh, 2 delivery, and that'll be lifted up in the air to shallow right field, and Dino backing up. Marquecas wants it. And the Marquecas will put it away. So no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Bottom of the third, coming three to one A's. Go beyond the stadium, visit Sarasota on Florida's Gulf Coast at number1beach.com. Another mid 80s day for the beachgoers in Sarasota today. Here we started at 60 degrees. It'll get a little cooler as we roll along tonight here at Camden Yards. The Orioles opening up this three game set against the 10 and 10 Oakland A's. Wei Yen Chen will go against Tyson Ross tomorrow. Tommy Hunter and Bartolo Colon in the Sunday afternoon game. Here's Andino. Robert back from Miami after he and his wife celebrated the birth of their second child, their new daughter. All going well. So Andino's back at second base for the Orioles with that 300 average. And a big cut and a miss on it. And McCarthy gets ahead on the count 0 2. It was nice to see Robert in the clubhouse today. He had a big smile on his face, you know, proud Papa, but also happy to be back here with the Orioles with such good things happening around this clubhouse as well. Jason Birkin sent down in case you missed it earlier, called up for the two games from Triple A, did not appear, and then back down today with the roster move necessitated by Andino's return. One ball, two strike delivery by McCarthy to him, and he's gone. That'll be the second strikeout for McCarthy. One away here in the third inning. Time for our AT&T Mobility Trivia Fact. Opponents batting 406 with an OPS of 125 off Brandon McCarthy with the bases empty. With runners on, 197 and a 516. That is a tremendous disparity. It sure is. He bears down a little bit, doesn't he? Wow. One down here. Here's Nolan Reimold. Reimold continued his hit streak to a new career high of 12 with a double and a run scored in the first inning on the Marqueca sacrifice fly. Carly's 0 1 pitch, and that's in there for a strike. McCarthy's a great ratio of. Uh, Strikeout to walk 4.4 strikeouts for every walk he only walks 1.4 per nine innings and he doesn't give up many home runs. No two delivery 
outside of first base. Kayahua over and no play. Well, he attacks the strike zone and he mixes his pitches up pretty well as he's done here in the early going. And he, you know, he, like we had talked about earlier, he's, he pounds that strike zone, relies on his defense a lot of times. 0 oh, 2 delivery down to third. Tough play. Sogar out, makes the throw. Nice stretch and a nice play. Sogar to third base. Well, they've been in search of a consistent third baseman. I know they went out and got Hughes, but Sogard steps in today. Nice backhand play. Strong throw. Feeling pretty good after hitting that home run as well earlier in the game. Yes, I wasn't supposed to play, so I'm going to have the best game of my life. <laughs> good play by Sogard at third base. Here's J.J. Hardy flied out to left field his first time up. And Hardy will take it for a strike. McCarthy with the one and one career mark against the Orioles. Pitch will be taken away. And right now, just comfortably throwing mostly strikes. One and one on Hardy. Infield playing in the pull. Outfield straight away. That will miss outside. And a two ball one strike count on JJ. When you can have command of, of all your pitches. You can throw, throw them at any time. You're going to get outs. You're going to get outs for sure. <laughs> he does with uh, Hardy. That is a one, two, three inning. Three complete here at Camden Yards with the A's leading by two. to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Pretty ugly numbers, although you wouldn't know it the way the A's have started tonight. Overall, their batting average 205. With runners on, it gets worse, 196. With runners in scoring position, it gets worse again, 182. And if there are two down, forget about it, 118. What have they done in this ball game? Three runs on three hits through three innings. Right, exactly. And the home run. Isn't that your glove? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Guy with a cowboy hat back there. Saying, Bubba, where I'm from, that's a small glove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you must be an infielder, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me feel that. Mmm, real leather. <laughs> uh, gosh. Kayahua and a two ball count. <laughs> He drew a walk, scored in the second inning. Here's the 2 0 delivery. And Arietta continues to struggle with that strike zone. He's had only three first pitch strikes on 14 batters. And he's taken the count deep a lot, and he goes to 3 0 here. 
Kaiowa is going to take that. It is in there for a strike. That's yeah. the first strike he's seen tonight. Yeah, Kaiowa. Four straight out of the zone that first time up to put him on base. The Honolulu native will pop that one up. Shortstop. And uh, Hardy will put it away. So Arietta comes back to get the out. Tomorrow is the season's first Junior Orioles dugout club game. Bring the family out to the ballpark and the kids 14 and under. You can get tickets to 10 games, the hat, the membership card, backpack, and more. Only $20. There are giveaways at each game. And family and friends, they'll get tickets starting as low as $6. Tomorrow, hope you'll arrive early. A large walk-up expected with Frank Robinson being honored tomorrow. The dugout club day is tomorrow as well. Five o'clock for the unveiling ceremonies in the picnic area and the public is invited to attend. Should be a great time. Here is Seth Smith. And a chick swing and the strike call one ball one strike count. He did strike out the first time up. Arietta two walks three strikeouts the A's three three and oh the Orioles one one and oh. A leadoff double by Reimold who scored the only Orioles hit so far. Two and one. Well, I'll tell you what, Jake Arrieta facing Kaya Uwe really battled back after he fell behind 3-0 to induce him to pop up to J.J. Uh, Hardy. So that's got to make him feel a lot better. He was back on the inside corner there against Smith and a two ball two strike count. The Orioles with their first four game win streak of the season on the line coming into this game tonight. Breaking ball tapped short Hardy and gunned it and gets the out. Hardy thought Flaherty was going to cut that off and all of a sudden was like whoa uh, I better get that over there and did. Well Flaherty was aggressive on it and then I think he realized that J.J. was going to have an easier play and it was and they got the out. Good job. Good play all the way around. Good job by J.J. Hardy staying with that ball, especially with Flaherty being so aggressive coming after it. Getting to know you. Getting to feel free and easy. Mm -hmm. Flaherty and Hardy. Two down. Here's Kurt Suzuki. Double and an RBI. His first time up. Arietta now over the 80 pitch count mark for that last fastball. Oh, on the count. Weeder sets up a waist, comes in. Suzuki takes it. One ball, one strike. Orioles are now six and three at home. Oakland on the road, four wins and three losses. One one delivery on the way. And that is on the outside corner, and it's one and two. Well, that was a nice pitch. I mean, Jake's cutter or slider. I think that's the pitch he's commanding the best tonight. Here's the one-two delivery. There it was again. That's a, that's a good pitch. Uh, that's a good spot. Just where he wanted to throw it. A's coming in with a couple of wins against the White Sox, two to nothing, five to four, in a 14-inning game in their last game. Two-two off the end of the bat, popped it up, and Dino. Look up, and Dino's got it. Davis was edging over. The second baseman puts it away, and Arietta has a one-two-three inning, three to one A's.
Orioles baseball on Masson is brought to you by AT&T 4G LTE. With speeds up to 10 times faster than 3G. AT&T Rethink Possible. And by Burger King. Gary Thorne, Mike Bordick, and that amazingly self-contained glove. If you do not catch a ball with that glove, you charge with three errors on every play. You're right. Here's Brandon McCarthy on the mound. So far, efficient. Orioles run in the first inning. Sack fly by Marquecas. And Marquecas will lead it off here in the fourth. Marquecas 3 4 11 with a home run lifetime off the Oakland right hander. And McCarthy's pitch is in there for a strike. McCarthy has started 10 of the 12 batters in the ball game with strikes. Getting ahead. 0 1 delivery and a check swing away. McCarthy 9 and 9 last year. A few more runs and he would have been much better than that. Ground ball to second. Weeks shortstop. Oh yes. Weeks to Pennington to first for the out. You'll be seeing that a few times. Pretty nice play right there by the middle infield for the Oakland A's. Weeks ranging to his right. Peddington waiting for it. Strong throw. Obviously something they practiced before. Peddington uh, aware that he was going to flip that. <laughs> Made that look real easy, didn't they? They did. <laughs> they did. That was impressive. Weeks and Pennington combining. Keystone combo getting it done there against Marquegas. Here's Adam Jones. He grounded out to short his first time up. That'll skip off Suzuki's glove. Ball one. Take a look at our Hollywood Casino League leaderboard. The home runs, Texas, Yankees, and then the Orioles with 28. Followed by the Rays and the Red Sox leading the American League in home runs. And Adam Jones, one of the reasons the Orioles are there. With his six home runs, 10 RBIs. Our league leaderboard brought to you by Hollywood Casino, slots, tables, and dining. The ultimate triple play at Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races. And Jones will take the pitch inside for a ball. Adam has had a four for 11 in the homestand with a home run and two RBIs. Outfield deep on him. And a towering fly ball towards right center. So Spadus is over. And he's got it. Two down, fourth inning. Six in a row, retired by McCarthy. Yeah, he seems to be settling in. Obviously, uh, we had talked about how he utilizes that defense, throwing a lot of strikes. He only has one base on balls tonight. And uh, you saw what the middle infield is capable of doing. Right there, so he's going to keep attacking the zone until the Orioles chase him out of there. Here's Matt Wieters. Matt flied out his first time up off to a hot start at home where he's hitting 333, 100 points higher than he is on the road. Matt, too, is six home runs, three away, and three here at Camden Yards. And a one ball, one strike count. That's been a big pitch for him, that breaking ball. You know, he throws ball one, and most hitters in that situation will be sitting on a fastball, and he just drops a breaking ball in there, and he started off a lot of hitters with that breaking ball. Off the end of the bat to short, Pennington. And another 1-2-3 inning. So that's seven in a row set down by McCarthy. We've completed four at Camden Yards in the opener of this three-game set.
the Orioles Legends Celebration Series, a special pregame ceremony honoring Frank Robinson will begin at 5, and he'll be the first Oriole honored with a larger-than-life bronze sculpture in the new centerfield picnic area. All fans tomorrow will receive a replica to take home as a memory of a special day. For tickets, 888-848-BIRD or Orioles.com slash legends. There are the legends who are going to be honored throughout the summer with the unveiling of those sculptures out in the new picnic area. Frank Robinson, the first, and that will start tomorrow. And he refused, did not want to see what the final work looked like. He saw the mock-up of the Baltimore sculptor who's doing that work, I believe over in Hamden at the great facility over there. But he didn't want to see it. They asked, do you want to see it before we unveil it? Nope. I'm going to wait till Saturday and look at it then. Eric Sogard and a two strike count on him. Sogard with a two RBI homer that came in the second inning. Arietta's delivery to him. A little breaking ball back to the mound. Gets it. Went away in the fifth. For Orioles alerts, you can't miss including uh, starting lineups, in game updates. Text Orioles 29 292. Arietta looking for the quick inning up to 88 pitches thrown in the ball game. He has retired the last six batters faced. Here's Pennington the shortstop who grounded out his first time up. Ray Fossey was kind enough to come in from the Oakland broadcast booth. After that play made by Weeks to Pennington for the out on Marquecas. And tell Mike Bordick. That was you. <laughs> that looked just like you. I would never take a chance to make a play like that. <laughs> no, there wasn't much flash in my game. I just had to get get it out. <laughs> uh, ball hit in the air to center. Jones lines it up. And there are two down. The state of baseball history brought to you by Ocean City, Maryland. To make memories of your own this summer, book your vacation at OCOcean.com. It was in 1983 in the state that Nolan Ryan bested Walter Johnson's 56 year old record, striking out his 3,509th batter. This date in 1983. Yikes, 56 year old record. Yeah, he's pretty good. Wallace Johnson was okay. Yeah. Good pitch. <laughs> you never get over the fact you look at those numbers. Guys who won 500 and something games and they had. Some of them had more complete games than they had wins. There's an attempted wipeout of the entire Orioles bench by weeks. Wow. The, the bat. Flying into the dugout. <laughs> and a smile on each side. <laughs> Richie Bansell is giving some signals like <laughs> keep the bat in your own dugout. Whoa. Oh, it got him. Yikes. It got him. Right on the shin. Yay. Rick Adair, the pitching coach. Dutifully charting. Sitting next to the right guy. 1-1 <laughs> one, one delivery to short. That's going to be a one hopper. And that is the one, two, three inning he was looking for. So both pitchers settling in. Arietta has set down eight in a row. Three to one A's.
right there. Well, Jake has definitely settled down after that tough second inning, battled back, and you know this is something we've been hoping for. Obviously, to make an adjustment after a tough inning, and he has two back-to-back -back one, two, three innings, but. The Orioles haven't been able to get to Brandon McCarthy who's thrown just a one hitter. So, you know, trying to put the pressure on him is going to be the key for them. Would you go after first pitches with a guy like McCarthy who throws so many first pitch strikes or not? Well, the problem is he's mixing it up so well. He's throwing breaking balls for first pitch strikes. He's throwing that cutter for first pitch strikes. He's running it back over for first pitch strikes. So you really don't know what to sit on unless you guess. Take a chance. Yep. And only uh, 50 pitches thrown so far, and 80% of them have been the fastballs. And the Orioles will try and get to him here. Here's Chris Davis. And Davis will take that for a strike. Davis, Reynolds, and Flaherty. Davis, a strikeout victim his first time up. The Orioles have had only one hit, and that was Reimold, first batter for the Orioles in the, in the ballgame. All right, things look so promising back then. You know, first hitter of the ball game, double, hit it hard, and you know, get to score the run early, make a mark early. Just think it's going to be a blowout. But uh, he's quieted the bats for sure. That one's going to go down the line, and that is a fair ball. It'll roll into foul territory. Davis on his way to second base, and a stand up, or could have been double. And the Orioles have the leadoff man on with their second hit. Well, there you go. We're talking about the one hit. And boom, we get another one. Just fisted it down the line. Perfect placement right there. Pulls the hands inside. And fortunately, stays fair down the line. And Chris Davis is in for a leadoff double. Davis with a half dozen doubles. And now Mark Reynolds will try and get him home. Reynolds drew a walk his first time up. McCarthy has walked one and struck out two. Reynolds will take the pitch outside for a ball. One thing, a lot of negative numbers for Reynolds. He's had a couple of hits in 10 at bats with runners in scoring position. He has picked it up here in the last couple of games. At home, 1 0 pitch to him, and that will be grounded foul. He's just trying to find some kind of flow at the plate now. Well, he sure is, you know, and, he, and he's been coming out. He's been getting, taking early back batting practice. You know, at the first um, game of the Toronto series, he was able to get a couple hits, and, and you think that's the kind of stuff that's going to get it going. He had that infield hit, um, but just getting to settle in and feel comfortable up there and get the barrel on the ball. 1 1 delivery to him. And after the high heater and a one ball, two strike count. Well, you can see a little bit of that frustration right there. Sometimes it's uh, not trying so hard, just trying a little bit less and, you know, and, and, and trusting. I mean, obviously, Mark Reynolds has played baseball his whole life, you know, trusting that ability, that natural ability that he has to drive the ball. 1 2 the count, runner off second base. McCarthy goes way outside to him. And a two ball, two strike count. Pretty amazing that the Orioles, with, with such great power numbers here in the early going, and without Mark Reynolds even having one, he hit 37 home runs last year. And without Hardy. Right. Hardy's not, uh, he's had three of them, but not on the pace he was on last year. Tag put on by Suzuki. McCarthy gets his third strikeout. Well, McCarthy really didn't give anything to Mark to hit. He, he pitched around the zone, and, and that last pitch, you know, a hard breaking ball down, but, you know, bounced it and just worked the perimeter, perimeter of the strike zone on Mark Reynolds right there. So now Ryan Flaherty starting at third base in the ball game. Flaherty flied out to center field his first time up. RBI chance. Pennington will hold Davis close at second base. And the pitch will be taken. First major league base hit. How about this way to get it done? Hey, anyway, baby, he squares around, lays down a perfect sack bunt, and gets uh, rewarded for the proper execution right there with his first major league hit. 
He was pretty excited last night after the game. As he should be. Ended up with his first RBI, and that's going to be a solid single. Davis will be held at third. No! Came all halfway down the line and now goes back. Whoa! Mm. DeMarlo Hale had the stop sign up. DeMarlo ended up way down near the plate because he couldn't get Davis to stop. He finally did. Base hit for Flaherty. Well, nice hitting right there by Ryan Flaherty right up the middle line drive and Chris Davis actually gets a great read right there. But tomorrow Hale says no 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 hold up. We don't want you running into an out. And I think tomorrow may he might have been ready to tackle him right there. <laughs> so hold him up and fortunately throw off line and Chris Davis able to get back to third base. Davis. Finally saw him and went back. I mean, even with the throw off the mark, he would have been out at the plate. Suzuki would have had time to come back to get him. Instead, the Orioles have runners at first and third. And here's Andino. And Andino will take that pitch for a strike. So the Orioles have the potential time runs on, trailing by a score of three to one. Andino's got a three for nine going with runners in scoring position. Struck out his first time up. Davis, the lead runner, Flaherty on at first base. McCarthy's now given up three hits. And you know the short runners coming to the plate. Go for two. There's one. Reach the first. Boy, there's a big double play. No runs, two hits, no errors, and a base runner left on. And we've completed five three to one A's. And tomorrow the Orioles will be paying tribute to the first of six Oriole legends to be immortalized with statutes here at Oriole Park. The great Frank Robinson will be the first to be honored. That's tomorrow. Our coverage begins 630 Mass and HD O's Extra presented by Jeep followed by game coverage game two. Way in Chen will take on Tyson Ross game time is seven. All the access you need right here on Mass. Well you match up those numbers right there with Chen and Ross and it just looks like another great pitching battle. Just like Arietta and, and, and McCarthy here going at it again. Go, go, Chris takes it for a strike. Well, there's uh, Brandon McCarthy who's done a great job tonight to keep the O's bats at bay. And, you know, we talked about him utilizing his defense, and right there to end the inning, there was some pressure on him, and he gets that ground ball, 6 4 3 double play. Pennington and Weeks are pretty impressive at second around second base aren't they boy they sure are and I've seen some highlights over the years of, of Pennington out there and you know strong arm rangy shortstop looks really good here's the one one delivery that's going to skip away not a piece maybe of the home plate umpire that time Jeff Kellogg. Well, you're never safe out there. We've seen bats flying in dugouts, and boy, that get, gets Kellogg right up under the mask in the left part of his neck. Two ball, one strike delivery, and a chopper to second base. And Dina will make the play and get the out. 
Togo Chris retired. He's one for three in the ball game. One away in the sixth inning. Don't forget the Mid Atlantic Sports Report returns Monday, five to six thirty. Don Davis, Mel Anson, and Phil Wood, Dave Johnson. They will have all the latest Oriole news and information and the look all around baseball. That's Monday at five, right here on Massey. Left-hander Troy Patton in the bullpen. Ninety-eight pitches thrown by Arietta. There's ninety-nine. That is looped into the seats by Reddick. Who is 0 for 2? He has struck out and grounded out. Well, Jake had that rough second inning where he threw 32 pitches, and you know he's battled back. He's responded well to that rough inning. And foul back again. The one out walk. Kiowa got it to start the second inning off, and then with two outs, Suzuki delivered the RBI double. Followed by Sogar delivered the two RBI home run. So all three of those runs came with two away for Oakland. Reddick will take the pitch up high and a one ball, two strike count. You know, you talk about the struggles of this Oakland offense. I mean, that's been what we've been alluding to most of the broadcast. And, you know, a lot of these guys, they've had success in the major leagues. You know, they have a track record. Of success. I mean, Weeks hit 300 last year. Coco Crisp, 275 career hitter. Reddick at 250. So, so a lot of these guys have have track records in the in the big leagues. So you know they're going to be successful eventually. And if the Oakland A's offense starts putting it together along with that pitching, you know, they're, they're going to have some success this year. Dial back in the preseason, there were some who thought Oakland would be the sleeper team, if you will. In the fight for a wild card, and they still may be under Bob Melvin. They, with the great pitching they've got, I mean, anytime you have pitching like they do, you're going to give teams some trouble. They got Kurt Young back as the pitching coach. He's returned to Oakland. Two-two delivery. He lifts that one in the air to right center field. That is way back, and goodbye home run. Reddick has done it again. He just tears up Oriole pitching. And he will make it a four to one ball game. Reddick gets home run number three, RBI number five. Well, he just drops the head. Pitches down in the zone. And he gets good leverage on that ball, drives it out to right center. His fourth home run and 12th RBI here at Camden Yards in 33 at bats. So Spadis puts one in the air. That's going to go to right. Nick Marikakis will handle that one. And there are two down. Two home runs in the ball game, accounting for three of the four runs off Arietta. And Arietta had come in having surrendered only two home runs in his previous starts, one against New York. And now, uh, Two in this game, and that's going to be it. So Buck Showalter on his way out, trying to give Arietta an opportunity to maybe hang in the inning and get some run support. Not here. Threw only eight of 22 first pitch strikes, and he will leave trailing four to one.
Coming out of the ball game, Jake Arrieta, five and two thirds innings, four runs, four hits, two walks, three strikeouts, and two home runs. Well, he had the rough second inning, and, and obviously very disappointing there, giving up that home run to Reddick, because it seemed like he had kind of battled through that rough inning, and and he had a couple one, two, three innings in the fourth and the fifth. So uh, very obviously very disappointed in giving up that home run, but you know he battled through there, got his team into the sixth inning, and. And now it's up to the bullpen. And with two down here in the sixth, and the base is empty. Troy Patton ready to go to work. Kile Kayao will come to the plate. He has walked and scored and popped out. He's actually uh, in limited at bats, gone six for 13 off left handers. Patton, the lefty, will work on him here. And the sweeper is going to miss outside for a ball. The bullpen, he just doesn't get any better than that. 1.96 for the Orioles. The Texas, New York, then Oakland, and Chicago. The 1 0 delivery to him. Chuck swing, but he went around on it. And a one ball, one strike count. Nice pitch. Great breaking ball right there by Troy Patton. You know, it's kind of fun. Baseball is a, a strange game, and, and things always get kind of reversed around, but. Here you are, the the Oakland A's. They they haven't hit many home runs this year. No. And the, and you know the Orioles are leading the league or second or third in the league anyway, one of the top teams. And and uh, here the A's have taken advantage of two home run balls to take this 4-1 lead. The A's came into this home run wise tied for 11th with 15 home runs. They've got two in this ball game. Two on delivery, and that will just miss on the inside part of the plate, and the count will go to three and one on Kaiowa. Reddick getting that last one and taking Ariette out of the ball game. Patton with the three one delivery, two down, nobody on. That one hit hard, but an Adam ball to center, and that Adam is Jones. One run on one hit. No errors, nobody left on base. We go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Now a 4 1 A's lead. And care first, Blue Cross Blue Shield will contribute $50 to support the American Heart Association Heart Walk. To date, the Orioles have drawn 47 walks for a total of $2,350. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Brandon McCarthy with a walk and three strikeouts. Rymold to right. Looking back at the warning track with room. Catch is made by Reddick. Rymold with a one for three, a double, and one away in the sixth inning. Right now, big play of the ball game was in that fifth inning when the Orioles covered first and third with only one down. And McCarthy got that ground ball off Andino's bat to turn two. That is really the best chance the Orioles have had 
for a rally in the ball game. You can't be much more effective and efficient than McCarthy has been in this game. Well, he's done a great job. And, and funny about that inning, the fifth inning, when tomorrow Harold Hale held up uh, Chris Davis, he was trying to prevent from, you know, ruining the rally because there was something good happening. And, and unfortunately, McCarthy gets Andino to hit into the 6 4 double play, 6 4 3 double play. 22 ground ball double plays have been turned by the A's. They're up there among the leaders in that department. 1 1 delivery. Hardy's got a gapper. That's going to split. Zapatis gets over, bobbles it, comes up with it, throw to second, the cutoff man, and in with a double is J.J. Hardy. Well, a nice piece of hitting right here. We saw this two nights ago with a fastball up and out over the plate. He stays inside it well, drives it to right center. Zapatis has to slide to keep that ball in front of him and, and just boots it. Allowing J.J. Hardy to get into second base. So the Orioles get the potential tying run, or no, sorry. Get it to the on-deck circle, not to the plate. Nick Marikakis, uh, an RBI on a sack fly, and was taken out on a fine 4-6-3 play his last time up. The Orioles have gone one for four with runners in scoring position so far tonight, leaving two on base. One of those in scoring position in that fifth inning. Well, I'll tell you what, winning breeds confidence. And I know everybody in that dugout for the Orioles, they don't feel like they're out of this game and there's still an opportunity to, to put some runs up on the board. Not the way the Orioles have put up the uh, late inning runs, in particular with the long ball. I mean, the Orioles now have gone four and five and trailing after seven. They won only five such games all of last year, and they've already won four this year. So they've been a comeback team late in the ball game. Nick Marcakis, Hardy off second base, the 0-2 delivery, and Brandon McCarthy just bears down and gets a strikeout. Two down. Well, that might have been the hardest pitch he's thrown all night, up and in to, to Nick Marcakis. Three pitches and then he rides that fastball up and in. Nick can't quite get to it. Adam Jones will get his first chance tonight with a runner in scoring position. 235 in these situations so far for Jones. A four to one ball game. The A's on top, first of three in this set here at Camden Yards for the weekend. McCarthy's delivered to Jones. Breaking ball on the inside corner for a strike. Well, there it is again. Another breaking ball. Just continues to mix it up on the first pitch, and he's throwing him for strikes. Saying to Mike, he came into the ball game. McCarthy had given up more hits than any other pitcher in the American League. 40 of them coming into the game. That's going to be in the right field. Base hit. Reddick's got an arm. DeMarlo Hale's going to wave him home. He bobbled it. And the Orioles get their second run, 4-2. to two. Jones picking up the RBI, number 11 on the year. Nice piece of hitting right there by Adam Jones. Pitches down, stays inside it. McCarthy hit his spot, too, but Jones beat him. Nice job. Reddick out there bobbles it. Tomorrow, Hale kind of hesitated at first just to see what Reddick was going to do. He uh, obviously knows Reddick from, from Red Sox days, and as soon as he bobbled it, he sent J.J. Hardy on home. Now the Orioles get the potential tying run at the plate. 4-2 game. Throw over. Jones back to the bag. Matt Wieters. 0 for 2. He is flied out and grounded out in the ball game. Orioles now out hitting the A's 5-4. McCarthy with a long look over to Jones. Wieters will take it and it's in there for a strike. Nobody up in the bullpen for the A's. Brendan McCarthy. Bob Melvin leaving him to do his own work out there and he certainly has earned the right to do that the way he's pitched. Nice. Here's the 0 1. 
Only thrown 73 pitches tonight so far, so you know he's in a good position in this part of the ball game. I was going to say with McCarthy coming in, I've given up the most hits. Mike and I were talking about that between innings. McCarthy's also had the one extra start. Right. Mike noted as uh, this team started in Japan and then had a layoff before their third game. They played two games over there, came back, went back into spring training again. Yeah. So McCarthy had the start over there, then the start over here, so he got an extra start. And that's one of the reasons that hit count is up. Two ball, one strike count, two down. Waiters waiting on the 2 1. And that is in there for a strike. So productive from the left side, all six homers, all 13 RBIs have come from this side of the plate for Waiters. Jones again will get back. Last year against right handers, Matt ended up hitting 237, a hundred points higher against left handers. This year he's hitting 292 against the right handers so far. 2 2 delivery, readers will take it and it'll go full. So Jones will be running with two down. Crowd's ready. Fuse to pull one out of here. It'll get real loud. Yeah, yeah, sure would. Here's the 3 2. Runner goes. Weeders down to first base. Foul ball. 3 2 breaking ball. That's sure. confidence for a pitcher, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. I mean, he's throwing that breaking ball first pitch. He's throwing a 3 2. Anytime. And that that's obviously been the key to his success throughout this ball game. Well, McCarthy's 0 and 3. His ERA of 3.38 is a good one. 3 2 again. Waiters again. Fights it off. Don't forget our PNC postgame show brought to you by PNC for the Achiever in you. PNC Bank brings it to you. Tom Davis, Greg Dempsey, Mike will join them. Buck and his press conference, player interviews all coming up after the ballgame. Weeders have fought off two 3 2 pitches. This is the eighth pitch of the at bat. Weeders takes it and he gets the walk. Well, great at bat right there by Matt Weeders. Pretty good battle by both McCarthy and, and, and Matt. And Matt able to lay off that breaking ball down and in. Only two walks surrendered by McCarthy. The other one came in the second inning. Now it'll be up to Davis, who has doubled and struck out. Key moment in the ball game here in the sixth inning. Orioles have put one across to cut the lead of the A's to 4-2. And now Chris Davis with another chance. Jones got the RBI single with two down. First action in the bullpen. Ball to first base is a fair ball. And that will end the inning. Gaiola playing over on the line, able to handle that one. One run, a couple of hits, no errors. Two are left on base.
It's for tonight. Eric Sogard hits a two-run home run off Jake Arrieta in the second inning. The defensive play of the game so far. Weeks to Peddington. Just in time. Pretty nice play right there. Adam Jones came up in the sixth to get the RBI for the Orioles, scoring J.J. Hardy. And here we stand, four and two. Nolan Rymel, one for three with a double and a run scored. Josh Reddick for the A's, one for three with a home run in the sixth. And Eric Sogard got that big two-run home run in the second inning. Troy Patton on in relief, came on to get the final out in the sixth inning. He will be facing Smith, Suzuki, Sogard, 6 7 8 in the order. And the first pitch is taken away for a ball. For Seth Smith so far on the season against left handers, he's only faced at four at bats against the lefty, one for four. And that breaking ball by Patton is in there for a strike. The Orioles trying to make five in a row. Oakland trying to make it three in a row. Last time the Orioles had won five straight last August. And they put it together. Swung on a miss by Smith. The Orioles also wanted to get six games over 500. If they could do that, and they would with a win tonight, it would be the first time the Orioles would be six games over 500 since July of 2005. Well, Joe would, Walter's team in that tie for first. Yeah, he would definitely like to keep extending the lead before we start uh, running into some more American League East opponents. Good pitch right there, and Smith is retired on the strikeout. Patton gets the K. Well, Troy Patton makes a great pitch right here. Boom, down and away. Just off the plate, but Matt Waiters with a nice frame. To help out Troy Patton right there. <laughs> Pretty good reaction. See the bullpen comparison last year to this, there is none. Entirely different. So far, the results, as we said, number one ERA in the American League for bullpen. Here's Kurt Suzuki. Little knee buckling on that one, got fooled by the pitch. RBI double in the second inning and has popped out. You know, Suzuki now with eight batted in. Starting starting pitching and, and the bullpen, they go hand in hand with success. If the starting pitching gets deeper in the ball games, bullpen's roles can be established much better and, and utilized the right way. And that's why you're seeing that success right now. And and uh, you know, but it the beauty of it is just building confidence with with everybody out there. And, and uh, they're having great success here early in the year. Breaking ball will be taken inside. And a two ball one strike count on Suzuki. Obviously the bullpen already in action for the Orioles here tonight and more to come. Two and one. Suzuki will take that one down low. Five for 18 off the lefties for the A's catcher. Patton has been effective coming in for the inning or two of work that he's been called on to get done and he's done a pretty good job of getting right handers out of there. Here's the three one delivery on the way Suzuki takes it for a strike three and two. Good pitch staying aggressive. Well Troy Patton's not going to really back down from anybody. He uh, you know he has a great bulldog mentality. Comes after hitters with everything he's got. And Suzuki will chop that one to short. Hardy on a big hop. And there are two down. Take a look at our PNC minor league report brought to you by PNC for the achiever in you. Stu Pomerantz pitching uh, this season was promoted today from Bowie to Norfolk. See the numbers he had at Bowie. No earned runs, seven hits allowed, 20 strikeouts in 13 and a third innings. Obviously for the organization showing early on no sense holding him here needs a bigger challenge. Well there's no doubt about it and he was uh, invited to big league camp and really opened up some eyes down there. Stu did a great job and boy, they're excited to have Stu Pomerantz in the organization right now. 
Two down, nobody on. Pitch taken outside. Eric Sogard. Second home run. Second inning, good for two RBIs. Sogard against Patton with two down and nobody on. And he'll put that one in the air behind second base. Anybody, somebody. Shortstop Hardy will put it away. And a 1 2 3 inning. So Patton's retired all four that he's faced. Seventh inning stretch tied. Captain Yards, a 4 2 A's lead. Against the A's and a 4 2 ball game, and another good one underway as the Orioles continue to play in these very tight games set up by their outstanding pitching, which means the pressure's kind of always on because you know the next one may be the most important run or the most important out you're going to get. Well, there's no doubt about it. Mistakes end up showing up in games like this, and you know, the teams that end up winning are the ones that take advantage of those opportunities. But you know, it's been a pretty good pitcher's duel tonight. Jake Arrieta. Battled his way through to get the team into the sixth inning, and Troy Patton has come in and really slammed the door. So it's giving the Orioles that opportunity to get the late inning heroics like they've done in recent history. You're doing such a great job. The fans are just absolutely roaring. They're loving some, some 18,000 plus on hand for the ball game tonight. We hope you'll get out tomorrow. It'll be a very special day. The first of the six legends to be recognized as Frank Robinson will be honored and a big moment for Oriole fans. Oh, what a great time it is. And then to look forward to it all summer with the great legends of Orioles history is, is so exciting for this community because this is truly a baseball town and they love their ex Orioles in the Hall of Fame. And it's been talked about so long about getting some of these players recognized through the statues that are going to be unveiled here in the course of the summer because those haven't been here around the ballpark the way the fans I think would like to have had it and I think fans really are looking forward to that. Oh they're going to love it you know they see their numbers but they love they can't wait to see these statues. Sorry sorry we were just turning around there we did didn't mean to give you our back. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's up to the Orioles bullpen the other thing because the pen has been so successful for the Orioles is the offense always stays positive. There were times last year where the Orioles got in trouble and get behind and the feelings like oh no here we go again. Not the case this year. Well, no way. I mean, 12 home runs to lead the uh, league in the seventh inning and beyond. So, you know, they're excited about this opportunity and, and every chance they get late in the game to hit home runs, and they just never feel like they're out of the ball game. Mark Reynolds and a swing and a miss leading it off bottom half of the seventh inning. Reynolds has walked and struck out Flaherty and Andino do up for the Orioles. The 0 1 delivery is taken outside. Brandon McCarthy has gone the distance with two walks and four strikeouts. Here's the 1 1. And that's going to be up high. So the Orioles trying to get the potential tying run to the plate. Here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Getting a run in the sixth and the RBI by Jones. Sack fly first inning by Nick Marikakis. Suzuki's got an RBI. Sogard's got two RBIs on his home run and the solo shot by Reddick accounting for Oakland's four. And the 2-2 delivery. 
Fastball up high. So again, a full count, three balls, two strikes. Well, that's a good take right there by Mark Reynolds in his last at bat. McCarthy just worked the perimeter of the strike zone. He tried to do it again right there to get him to chase. Reynolds has picked up eight walks on the season to go along with the 26 strikeouts. You can almost feel him trying to relax at the plate. A lot of deep breaths. Here's the 3 2 delivery, and up high, and he got the walk. So the Orioles will get the potential tying run to the plate. That is walk number three. Oriole Park, the perfect setting for your next group outing. Gather up family, friends, co workers, colleagues, and have a great night or day here at the ballpark. Discounted ticket prices for groups as small as 15. Party facilities to fit up to 1,000. Camden Yards can make your group offering an experience you'll never forget. 888-848-BIRD or Orioles.com slash groups. Flaherty with a single, and he's flying to center. Sogard moves in at third. Flaherty will take the pitch for a strike. Well, McCarthy only has three walks. Mark Reynolds draws two of them. That was a nice at bat by Mark right there to get on base. Try to spark a rally here for the Orioles in the late innings. 0 1 count. Flaherty down to first and foul. He said Flaherty has put up some good numbers. Here's warm up action to the bullpen, Ryan. Cook. Flaherty is minor league average 278 over a four year period. Five home runs last year in Iowa, 66 Tennessee, double A, triple A ball with the Cubs. 0 2 delivery. And Flaherty got jammed, fouls that one straight back at a two strike count. And a pretty good cutter right there underneath the hands of Ryan Flaherty. This one, Ryan thought he was going to get to it. Just cut underneath. Two strike count. Reynolds off first base. Infield will back up for the double play now. Here's the 0 2. Flaherty not biting on a pitch away. Delano Hill with the signs at third. Well, you definitely know Ryan Flaherty's a little bit more comfortable up there in the box now that he's got three hits in the last two days, you know, searching for that first major league hit. Here's the one two delivery to him. Flaherty will put it in the air to center field. Cespedes is there. Reynolds will tag, force the throw, but not going anywhere. Cespedes has a strong arm out there in center field. On the fly to second base on that one. Yeah, not bad. Flaherty retired, one away. That will bring up Robert Andino. Andino has hit into a double play, a big one that came in the fifth inning, and has been called out on strikes. Andino, a lifetime 286 hitter against the A's. Stands in with one down, runner at first base. And the pitch is down low for a ball. One of the numbers that jumps out at you in the A's is the fact that they have been involved in eight shutout games already. That's a whole season's worth. They've had four shutouts of their own and they've been shut out four times. That's an enormous number for the first 20 games of the year. 1 0 pitch, Andino takes for a stroke. Highly unlikely Mark Reynolds would be running. Very short lead at first base. Here's the 1 1 delivery. And Dino reaching. That's a fair ball. There's one. They got to put a tag on it second and won't be able to. Kaiowa made a nice play at first base. It was literally on the bag. So they get the out at first and uh, Reynolds will go to second. And Dino hits the ball down the line. And he is right there on the base. But the problem is when you're lined up there, you're going to throw through the runner. So he just pulls it to try to avoid hitting Reynolds in the back. And almost throws it out in the left field. 
Pretty good play right there by Pennington to keep that ball in the infield. Oh, well, it sure was. Now here's Nolan Reimold. Do the Orioles have one of those late inning home runs in their pocket? Suzuki immediately went out to talk to McCarthy after that pitch. Double barrel action in the pen now. Cook has been up. Fuentes joins him. Rymel continued his hit streak first time up with a double. He's now hit in 12 and one for three in this ball game. One zero count, two down. That's going to be the left field. Another Adam ball. Hit hard, hauled in by Chris. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a base runner left on. Seven complete here at Camden Yards. He A's by two. Tonight so far, Santiago has won a total of $900 from the Maryland Lottery. For your chance to be the Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, play Strike It Rich Scratch Offs and enter your non-winning ticket codes at mdlottery.com slash strike it rich. Troy Patton will remain on the mound. He's retired all four batters that he has faced. Patton's longest outing this year was two innings against Toronto. On the 15th, he will be facing Pennington, Weeks, and Crisp. If he stays in, the Orioles' bullpen is active. Pennington has an 0 for 2. He has grounded out and flied out. Pennington, 3 for 21 off lefties. The shortstop waiting on the 0 1, and he'll pop it up. And there'll be no play. That led from the bullpen to the Orioles. Well, I'm sure the reason that Troy Patton is still in there is probably the numbers. Obviously better against hitters like Pennington. You just said three for 21 off lefties, so. You know, yeah, Weeks on deck hasn't hit lefties either yet. Right. Best inside, one ball, two strike count. Rick Arietta, the starter, four runs, four hits, five and two thirds innings. Patton on in relief. That goes to short. Hardy. The out. One away. Time to text in your vote for the AT&T player of the game. The candidates tonight, Nolan Reimold. Pick up a double and a run scored in this one. Josh Reddick, he has uh, delivered a big home run in the ball game. And Eric Sogard, a two RBI homer that came in the second. Text in your vote A, B, or C to 31826. Here is Weeks. 
Switch hitter. 179 right handed. 211 left handed. Jamal Weeks will take it for a strike. Troy Patton starting Weeks off with a breaking ball. The pitchers can come in off speed pitches and throw them for first pitch strikes. It really gets into the hitter's head, you know? In the air to right. Two down. Really don't know what to sit on if, if pitchers have command of, of off speed pitches and they throw them in those situations. Boy, because I think so many hitters are, I'm not going to say guess hitters, but tendency hitters when counts are in their favor. And 0 0, you're expecting a fastball. 2 0, obviously, fastball. And 3 1 counts. So, uh, you know, if a pitcher's got the confidence to throw breaking balls in those situations, hitters just, boy, they lose a little bit of that edge. Go, go, Chris will file that one away. Chris has had a double, one for three. Two down, nobody on in the eighth inning. Chris was hitting 167 right handed and 167 left handed. The double came in the third inning. The 0 1 delivery to him away and a one ball, one strike count. Chris uh, carries a 295 career average. Here at Camden Yards with a couple of home runs in this ballpark. Patton will miss outside with it. Count will go to two and one. Reddick waiting on deck. And that two's away. Big loss for Oakland came before the season ever got started, their third baseman. Scott Sizemore blew out a knee and is gone for the year, so they've really struggled trying to find somebody to play third base. Sogard is there tonight. They picked up Luke Hughes, who was in the starting lineup to play there, and still not sure uh, for Bob Melvin's team whether they've really got the third baseman, third base situation taken care of or not. Well, Hughes made, you know, three errors in two games over there, so. <laughs> that doesn't uh, obviously make Bob Melvin feel very comfortable about that situation. And Sogard scuffling a little bit as well, but did hit this two run home run tonight. Runner's going to go to first here on the 3 2. That was interesting. The bat boy picked the ball up as it ricocheted over towards the dugout. The home plate umpire was watching that bat boy right there. He thought the play was over. It wasn't. That ball's alive. And if it goes in the dugout, got a shot at another base. Yeah. Uh, the umpire said it wasn't going to happen, so they're only going to give him first. So Chris was on with a walk. That will do it for Troy Patton with Reddick coming up. Patton out of there as he worked uh, an inning and uh, two thirds, giving up no hits and one walk. That Lidstrom will come on to pitch to Reddick.
Effective Orioles bullpen. Here is Matt Lidstrom coming on for the eighth time. He's looked good all year. Power arm. Nice tight slider. It's been known he's hit 100 miles an hour before. Not this year yet, but 97, 98 miles an hour consistently. A runner on at first base, eighth inning. The A's lead at four to two. Reddick comes to the plate. Last time up, got his third home run of the year in the sixth inning. Runner goes. Here's Waiter's throw on the money, but not in time. Head for a slide by Crisp. Stolen base. Boom. Coco gets a good jump right there. Kind of interesting. JJ didn't straddle the bag on that one and doesn't get the call. Takes the throw in front. Very similar. Mm. Now Reddick files it back. So Coco Crest continues success in stealing bases. He's three for three this year and 26 for his last 26 going back to last year. And that stolen base obviously gives Reddick another RBI chance. Two down, 0 2 count. Lindstrom trying to hold it right here. Reddick, he's going to take advantage of it, a base hit, and he'll get an RBI. So the stolen base matters, and it is a 5 2 ball game. Reddick's second RBI of the game. Well, Reddick finds a hole, but obviously that's stolen base by Crisp. Very important. A's staying aggressive here in the eighth inning. Fists it up the middle, finds a hole, and Chris scores easily. So the RBI for Josh Reddick, no matter what uniform he wears, he continues to be a terror against Orioles pitching. And it is a 5 2 ball game, each team now with five hits, and Reddick up to six RBIs on the season. Cespedes at the plate will chop that one foul. The Orioles have held the cleanup batter to an 0 for 3 in the ballgame. The A's dead last with a 182 batting average with runners in scoring position starting the game. have gone 2 for 4. Bob Melvin talking to Chip Hale right there. Chip Hale being the bench coach for the A's this year. He's recently with the Mets. Talking over some late inning strategy, I'm sure. The A's have pretty much played the perfect game. Well, great starting yeah. pitching, key hits, really good defensive plays, speed. I mean, they've, this is the A's game. If they're going to win, you're seeing the A's at their best. That's what us who put that one in the air to center field. Jones going back, and he will haul it in. That will do it here in the top of the eighth inning, but a run in on one hit with one left on tomorrow. Frank Robinson order. Five o'clock here at the ballpark, the unveiling of the statue.
Star. You can honor the Camden Yards 20th anniversary by voting at least 20 times. You get 25 chances, actually. And uh, pick out the Orioles you like best, your favorites in baseball, for the All-Star Game in Kansas City. Vote often and vote early. Orioles.com slash All-Star. Ryan Cook on in relief. He's had some early success here. Uh, it depends on a very live fastball. 93 to 97. There's a slider and a split finger as well, but at times in his history, his, uh, his command is a little bit below average, so, you know, an opportunity here if he is a little bit erratic, take advantage of maybe a base on balls. Cook is only 24 years old out of Clovis, California. He came over from the Diamondbacks along with pitcher Jared Parker and an outfielder, Colin Cowgill, both on this A's team. Trevor Cahill, Greg Breslow went the other way in that deal last December. He'd been a starter when he first started pro ball. Turned into a reliever. And gets a shot here. First time he's ever faced the Orioles. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. It is 5-2. Barton moves in to play at first base for the A's defensive change. Big swing and a miss by Hardy. Doubled and scored in the sixth inning. One for three in the ballgame. Tremendous job by the starter, Brandon McCarthy. A chance to get his first win of the year in his sixth try. He gave up only two runs, five hits over seven, three walks, and four strikeouts. Here's the one two delivery. Hardy, what a breaking ball. Yeah, pretty effective pitch right there. Very tight slider down and away. He was rushing a couple fastballs in there. And boy, great location. Great late movement as well. That'll bring up Nick Marquegas. Sack fly RBI 0 for 2 officially at the plate. Each team with five hits, but the A's with the five runs. And a strike on a fastball on the outside corner. Nick didn't like that call very much. Oh, one delivery to him. That will miss down low and a one ball, one strike count. Here live fastball, 96. Some movement there. Fooled Nick on that one. Yeah, Marquegas behind on the count one and two. Cook pitched uh, with Arizona last year only in 12 games, and that's all the major league experience he has. 27th round pick back in 2008. And a swing and a miss. Well, he stayed aggressive with his fastball the whole at bat and elevated that one. And we've got Nick Marcakis to chase it right there. So Cook gets a couple of strikeouts here in the eighth. Adam Jones, RBI single in the sixth inning. One for three in the ball game. Now has a six game hit streak. Mm. Cook throws like this all the time. Nobody's going to get a hit. Well, he's been doing wow. this in the early going. Yeah. Pretty filthy. The A's uh, staff, you know, much like the Orioles with the early success. What a hard, nasty slider down and away right there. And he'll get ahead 0 2. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Adam Jones, 0-2, 2 down. Ryan Cook. Foul ball will keep it alive. Kevin Gregg throwing in the bullpen, the forgotten one right now in the Orioles' bullpen. Some rumors that the Angels have been in discussion with the Orioles, maybe regarding 
Kevin Gray. Here's the 0-2 delivery, and that's foul back. Well, Cook made a mistake with his 0-2 pitch, left a slider up over the plate, and Adam wasn't able to take advantage of it. And then he just tries to sneak that fastball by him, and Adam protects right there. Here comes the slider. And there goes the strikeout. Suzuki, though, is not going to get it to first base. So it'll be a strikeout and a wild pitch. Jones reaches. Well, the Orioles will keep the inning alive. Second wild pitch Cook has delivered in nine and two thirds innings. See if the O's can take advantage of a break. One of those rare chances where you get a shot at four strikeouts in the inning if you're the pitcher. Here is Waiters with a walk. He has flied out and grounded out, and he'll take the strike. Well, if. Uh Matt was watching Marquecas. I mean, Marquecas got four straight fastballs, all, you know, 96 mile an hour fastballs, but well, Matt, good opportunity to just sit on one of those fastballs. And that will be fouled the other way. And a two strike count on Weeders. Orioles after that late inning Oriole magic in this ball game. They had the lead in the first inning, one nothing, three runs crossed in the second inning, though, for the A's down three to one, and the Orioles have trailed since. Jones back to the bag. Pretty good ratio right there. Here's the 0-2 delivery, Weeders, and the foul ball to keep it at two strikes. Eighteen thousand two hundred and ninety-seven here at the ballpark tonight. Eighteen two nine seven. And they're seeing a good ball game. Here's the 0-2 delivery. Weeders reaching and fouled off. Suzuki couldn't keep it in the glove. And that's fouled off a couple nasty pitches. That tailing fastball right there up and away just to get a piece of it to stay alive in the pitch before. Tight slider down and in. I'll tell you what, in the seventh inning, it sounded like there were more than 18,000 people. It did, didn't it? It sounded like there were 47,000 people. We've been ready to... Uh, let it go all night here. Here's the 0-2 delivery. Waiters again. Fouls it back. So he battles. So open the bullpen is joined Kevin Gregg. Jones off first base. Here's the 0-2. Weeders. Just getting enough to keep the at bat alive. Trying to find one that he wants. Down on the count 0-2. And, and Cook's going to be throwing his 20th pitch. Jones reaching on the strikeout in the wild pitch. And the 0-2 delivery, and that's away. The ball and two strikes. Been a good battle for Matt. He's fouled off some tough pitches. Hoping for Cook to make a mistake. Give him an opportunity for a base hit here to keep a two-out rally going. 1-2 delivery, and Cook strikes out four in the inning. And the Orioles are retired. We go to the ninth. The A's lead it 5 to 2.
Vikings baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by Dodge. See your authorized Dodge dealer and experience a world of performance, design, and fuel efficiency. Schedule a test drive or go to Dodge.com and check out their powerful lineup. Ninth inning here at Camden Yards on a cool evening, but a good one for baseball. And uh, Kevin Gregg comes out of the pen, lets from a third of an inning one hit, Patton an inning and two thirds, a run, and uh, a strikeout. The run against him came when Chris drew the walk, stole the base, and Reddick got the base hit. It's been a long time for Kevin Gregg as he last appeared on the 18th against the White Sox. That was the last outing for Kevin. Now, now he'll face Barton, who'll get his first at bat, coming on to play defensively at first. And Derek Barton will take the pitch for a strike. Barton, the defensive replacement. The 0 1 delivery to him. One ball, one strike count. McCarthy in line to get a win if the A's can protect the lead. Arietta still the pitcher of record for the Orioles with the four runs, four hits, and five and two thirds innings. Barton swings through that one, one and two. Well, McCarthy threw a great ball game for the A's tonight, pounding the strike zone and utilizing his defense, like we had talked about in the pregame. And you know, we've seen some pretty good defensive plays. Weeks and Peddington up the middle. But uh, yeah, he definitely the storyline right now. Yeah, Greg will get a strike out. Let's update you on the voting for the AT&T player of the game. You still have time to text in your vote A, B, or C to 31826. Results on the O's Extra post game show. Here is Seth Smith. He is 0 for 3 in the game, the designated hitter. And Smith will take that for a strike. Orioles will have three to work with in the ninth inning. No one delivered. Down to first and a foul ball. Just missed going over the bag. And Smith will get a new bat as he Took that one right off the end of it. And a two strike count on Smith. Hitting his 189 on the season. Right now, that three run second inning is what's been the difference in the ball game. Reddick with a home run in the sixth, and then the added run in the eighth. And uh, the pitch will just miss. And a one ball, two strike count. Belfour is the closer. Matt Belfour, Fuentes, the left hander. One two delivery, and that will be taken away. A couple good pitches right there by Kevin Gregg. That's pain on the outside. Threw a fastball away, and then this was a little cutter coming back over. Pretty good location, but I've seen that call to strike earlier tonight. Smith rather goes down, joining Barton as a strikeout victim. Oh, nice job. Stayed aggressive, came right at him. Strike three, made some really good pitches right there. First two batters, two Ks. So two away, nobody on in the ninth. And Kurt Suzuki. And he'll pop that one up shallow right and Dino back. Marquecas in. And Marquecas has it. Nice shot by Greg as he retires the side in order. Bottom of the ninth inning for the Orioles. Davis, Reynolds, Flaherty do up.
O's extra post game, and Rick, it seems like Jake Arrieta just had too many pitches thrown early in this ball game. He was not sharp early on, but then again, the Oreo bats haven't been sharp either. We haven't seen a home run yet, but it's still reachable. Two men on and a blast, Tommy, and we've got a new ball game. <laughs> no doubt about it. We'll have some uh, interesting comments from manager Buck Show, well, just some uh, player interviews and a lot more as we begin O's extra post game right after the Orioles conclude this game, the first of a three game series against the Oakland A's. Let's go back to Gary and Mike. All right, Tom, Rick, thanks very much. And the Orioles will get a look now at Grant Belfour, the new closer. He was a setup man last year for the A's. He's taken over the closer's role this season. Virtually unhittable so far. Yeah, another one of these uh, tough bullpen guys for the A's. There was a fastball at about 90 to 93 miles an hour. Slider to right-handed batters, and he also has a curveball. He's had some success as well here in the early going. Belfour is five out of six. He blew his first save on Wednesday against the White Sox. He gave up a leadoff home run to Canerco in the ninth inning. Opponents hitting a combined 125 against him, the sixth lowest for American League relief pitchers. He now has 15 career saves. The Orioles faced him last year in five games. He didn't give up any runs, two hits, and five and the third innings against the Orioles last year. So Grant Belfour, their closer, comes on to try and wrap it up. I, I mentioned earlier this week, WJC's Mark Viviano had uh, cued me into an article that had been written in 2008 about closers and an article by someone who thought that the whole thing about closing had been completely overblown. The idea of a close was invented in 1960 by the great baseball historian who's passed away, Jerome Holzman. He wrote an article that for the first time talked about closers and the concept of a save. All closers owe him billions of dollars. But the study was done by one of the sabermatics people who went back over 100 years to take a look to see if the game results had changed because of a closer. And what, what was found in the research was 100 years ago, if you entered the ninth inning with a lead, you won the game 95% of the time. And 100 years later, if you enter the ninth inning with a lead, you win the game 95% of the time. Nothing's changed because of the closer and the save. It's whether you have a lead in the ninth inning. Here is Chris Davis, and he will take it for a strike. I had never seen the article before. It was a retro sheet historian who did the work on that, but I thought that was really, really interesting. So Belfort's trying to live by the numbers. <laughs> make a lot of money off it. There you go. <laughs> and the pitch is taken down low. Chris Davis would like to disturb the numbers by getting on and starting a ninth inning rally. Davis has double, grounded out and struck out. Belfort, the 1 1 delivery, foul back. In the article, what was cited talking to a couple of managers about if it doesn't make any difference, then why do you do this? And they talked to GMs about it too, some quoted, some not. But the general consensus was because fans expect it. Huh. If you don't do it, if you don't bring the so called closer in and you lose the game, yeah, right. you will take heat. Oh, you definitely will. I mean, there are a lot of different roles down there. Yeah. Right? The setup man, the yeah. closer, the long man. And uh, yeah, if, if if they do have established roles and you don't go by them, you will be questioned. You will be questioned. to no end. Yeah. Here's the two-two delivery to Davis, swung on, and that one is foul tipped. Fans hoping for the ninth inning rally. Davis Reynolds and Flaherty. And that will be outside. So he works the count full three and two. I said that by Chris Davis right here. You do what you can to get on base in the ninth inning. I wish I could get Don Zimmer on tape with his <laughs> explanation of roles that pitchers have in baseball. And he's on. Good job by Davis. He gets a leadoff walk here in the ninth inning. So Belfort surrenders the walk. Follow the Orioles MLB.com at bat 12 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Windows. 
You get live audio pitch tracking, video highlights. Text that bat 31826 to go to Don Zimmer, I, I kid him about it all the time because he gets furious. He rolls. You want to talk about rolls? I'll tell you what your roll is. If I get you up in the bullpen and I bring you in, your roll is to get the guys out. That's your roll. <laughs> Simplify it. You're exactly right. <laughs> and he goes on a tear about that every time I raise it with him. Well, let's see what the Orioles have here in the ninth inning. Here's Reynolds. He has walked twice and struck out. Runner on at first base, nobody out. First part of a rally has started here by the walk picked up by Davis on that 3 2 pitch. Reynolds will take it. Suzuki blocks it. It is a called strike. Wow. 0 oh 2. Well, that back, that pitch came back over the plate. Suzuki setting up away and it ran in a little bit. We saw that same play last night where the catcher couldn't hang on to it and the umpire called it a strike and we had said you very rarely see that and now we've seen it two days in a row. Breaking ball will miss outside and a one ball two strike count. Reynolds has faced Belfort only once and hit a home run off him. One ball, two strike count. Davis back to first. In the bottom of the ninth inning here at Camden Yards, the opener of this three game set, the good one. The Orioles trying to make it even more positive from their side with a rally here. Check swing, misses down low. Two and two. Good take. Another good at bat. Marks had two walks tonight. He had that 1K. A little frustrating. Kind of chased one out of the zone, but he's seen a lot of pitches. And he's battling again here in the ninth at 2-2. Two and two. Bell for the 2-2 two -two delivery. One down. A pretty good slider right there by, by ball four. Mark a little bit out ahead of it. The bell four gets the K. Nine strikeouts have been recorded by the three Oakland pitchers tonight. One down. Here's Flaherty. He has singled and flied to center twice. Barton will play behind the runner at first with the left handed batter up. Not wanting to give him the line. We'll give him the hole rather between first and second. All right, Chris Davis probably won't be running here. So why not give your defense as much of an opportunity to make a play as they can. Down the line and foul. So close. Right on the line, Eric Cooper, first base umpire. Well, it was close. Buck obviously looking down there at Cooper. Hits the chalk just before the base. And it almost looked like he was going to point fair and turns and points foul ball. That's as close as you can come not having a fair ball. Bell for 34 year old right hander with a one ball one strike delivery and that's going to be in there. And it'll go one and two. On Ryan Flaherty. Robert Andino waiting on deck. Bell for looked like he was talking to himself out there. <laughs> Chop foul again. I think sometimes when you get into a closer role, you, know, you start hearing voices in your head. <laughs> Closers tend to be a little bit different. <laughs> it's a tough situation. It's like a kicker in the NFL, you know. I mean, the game's on the line. 
A lot of pressure on you. Belfour came into this season with only 10 major league saves. He got a couple last year working in the setup role that as we said primarily had been used as a set up man. He had some very good years at Tampa Bay. Always has appeared in a lot of ball games. 62 last year with Oakland. One two delivery swung on and missed by Flaherty and he gets his second strikeout. Well, this is his curveball. Takes a little bit off. It's like 78 mile an hour breaking ball. And gets Flaherty out in front. Get uh, Reynolds to get out in front on a slider. And Flaherty chases out in front on a curveball. So the Orioles have just one out to work with as they trail 5 to 2. And Dino, 0 for 3 in the ball game. Runner will take second on defensive indifference. McCarthy waiting to see if he gets his first win. Two runs, five hits over seven. Arietta in line for the loss if the Orioles don't come back would be one and two. Four runs, four hits, five and two thirds. And Belfour is looking at the opportunity for a save. And Dino to second base, weeks bobbles, and Dino charging, but that's the ball game. So the A's, enough offense and uh, continued outstanding. Pitching in the ball game will come away with the opening win by a score of 5-2. The Orioles will be paying tribute to the first of six Oriole legends, Frank Robinson. The coverage of all the ceremonies and the statue unveiling tomorrow. It will be at 5 o'clock. Public is invited. We will begin our broadcast 6:30 on Mass and HD with those extra presented by G. Followed by game two. Wei Yan Chen takes the mound against Tyson Ross. For Mike Bordick and all of our crew, I'm Gary Thorne. This has been a Masson presentation. Tom Rick will be joined by Mike. The analysis coming up. Adieu, adieu.